Morning. It's another day. Today we will get the first coat of primer onto the forecastle cabin, into the front bee berth. It's been nearly five weeks since we've been here and it's taken us a lot longer than expected, as with all refits, so we're off. Can't wait to get it done. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30 foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue refit. If you want to be notified of all our weekly refit videos over the coming months, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button. We've just wiped down with methylated spirits, and now I'm just sitting here with a spanner in my hand. And that is because we're gonna take off all the nuts and the washers before we paint. We're gonna break years of tradition and not just paint straight over the nuts and bolts. Years of tradition overall. <laughs> There's a lot of boats like that actually. Mm, left croissant crumbs. Croissant. Yeah, we might have to vacuum that after a bit. You don't want to put croissant crumbs into the paint? Save something for later. <laughs> so getting these nuts off and their washers is not necessarily just because we don't want to paint over them. It's just that you want a film of paint underneath the washer. You don't want the paint to stop at the washer. Because <laughs> later on when we go up on um, up onto the deck I'll probably be that knife I'll probably be replacing a few of these bolts. And we'll certainly be cutting them off. So I want to be accessing them. But the problem anytime paint stops at a fastening is you have a weak point where the elements can get under, you don't have a continuous film of paint. And so the forces that want to destroy your boat have somewhere to access. And there's a lot of forces that want to destroy your boat. We wanted to get to this paint job at least a week ago. <laughs> but there's always just one more thing to be done. And because it's a boat, it usually takes all day to do that one little thing. Well, we're getting there. Oh, I think David's total optimist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting those little bits that you um, wouldn't have been able to get with any other tool other than like a really visible scraper. Are you, are, you, are you dressed up in the suit that I've been using? Yeah. <laughs> the bum's worn away. Is it? But it's still covering my bum. Yeah. It's a bit big. That's alright. You look great. The story with this room is that we just decided to rip everything out, as you can see, and sand everything back. And sanding actually took quite a long time. I think Troy was in here three or four days. We even went back to raw glass here. And then it was also getting the multi-tool into some of the trickier spots, like the corners and stuff like that, to really lift the paint because yeah, we've just been struggling with this room. I mean, whoever had the boat before us probably didn't do a very good job of painting, so we have been left with trying to lift off that old paint from before. Yesterday, to get all of the sanded room clean, I actually went around the boat, around all of the corners and everywhere with this scrubbing brush and sugar soap. And then that's why this morning I've been wiping just with fresh water, just lightly wiping all the surfaces to get any residue from the sugar soap off and any of the remaining remnant dust. And just before I wiped everything down, I did a vacuum too. So we're pretty much ready to paint now. I'm just going to go around with a paper towel and wipe down the surfaces that look a bit damp. And then I'm going to put the heater 
in this room for maybe one or two hours and have a little break and do something else. So what's left in here is dry so that when we put the primer on, we've got a dry surface. Yeah, while I'm wiping down, I just thought I might mention that we also spend a bit of time in this room filling holes with thickened epoxy that had been bothering us for quite some time. Let's see where I've repaired holes, because there's a cross. <laughs> What are you mixing up there? So I've taken a little bit of a shortcut with um, structural structural epoxy adhesive. Yep. It's already it's already thickened. It comes thickened, so that saves us a job, and it's really great for filling um, small gaps. And you can combine it with fiberglass as well to do things like. Um, so there was this timber, that's a, a solid uh, two inch by two inch bit of timber and it's just secured to plywood here. So I re-secured everything and screwed it so it's nice and firm but I was able to just put a bit of um, fiberglass tape straight there. But using that thickened stuff, as you put it in, it, it fared itself. So just with a light sanding, that, that'll be ready to paint. But that's that's a lot stronger. So there's batteries in behind there. So that's a lot stronger than it was. So that's the foot pump hole that's kind of cracked in the... Yeah, it's just had a... It's... I don't, I don't know how this happened. <laughs> it was before my time. Mm. We've sort of always had a foot pump there with like a, um, you know, a panel just to, to hide it. But this time we're going to just repair it, paint it, and I'm going to just get... Um, just fabricate up a nice stainless steel faceplate. Yep. So that would just be nice and white with just a stainless steel faceplate and then a few nuts. Look at that. Pretty good. Mm. It's a bit concave. It'll have it'll have two two cracks at it. You're gonna go again. Yep. Yeah. Because so when there's a bit of depth to it, I'll mm. I'll just have it a little bit below the surface, mm -hmm. and then um, we'll we'll sand that, and then I'll use a final. Um, my final fairing surface will be with the microbeads, so it makes it easier to sand. Bad news, we're not going to be painting today. I've found another hole. Uh, Troy has epoxied it, but I think it must have appeared, well, it appeared when I was cleaning out all the dust. So, yep, putting it on hold for one more day. And then as I was just wiping down the last little bit, last little corner in here, We found some more paint peel, so we'll just scrape this back together. And now I'm just sanding it, and so I have to clean up in here again. There you go. Oh my god, there's a tub of paint open. <laughs> Does that mean we're actually going to paint? This is our primer coat, isn't it? So this is primes, seals, six of anything, by all accounts. We're going to prime with this and then we're going to top coat it. So for the interior of our yacht, we like to use exterior paint, <laughs> exterior for houses. And that I'll be using an Alcott enamel, which sort of replaces the old, what people traditionally think of as um, oil-based house paints. Pasky's done a great job of getting the, the primer coat on. Both and we, of us. What's that? We both did it yesterday. Yeah, I guess. But you did the bulk of it. So while I cut in with a brush yesterday, Pasky used a roller, like a 100mm roller. But to be honest, they're pretty cheap, the rollers that we've got. Um, and they can lose a little bit of fur. So for the final coat, and we're just using, um, again, an Alcott enamel. So if you're wondering what they are, they replace the old-timey 
oil-based paints. So we're using an alkyl enamel exterior um, weather shield paint. So once it's finally set, it'll just give us a, a flexible, continuous layer of plastic, actually, over, over the whole thing. But I'm applying it with a brush rather than a roller. So I'm just going for... Um, I want to get good coverage because Marul's rough finished. So we need like a fairly deep matte roller to, to get right in there. But I can get a better finish with a brush because I can sort of lather it on to whatever thickness I like because it's, it's pretty easy to control the brush and then just tip it as I go. So we'll, we'll actually get a, a nicer finish. Another thing that Troy didn't mention that we were just talking about earlier that is that it's really great. The climate's really great at the moment. It's probably about 13 or 14 degrees Celsius. Not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Down there. Um, and so the boat surface is quite cool. So if you, as you're painting, you can kind of touch up what you're doing. Like the paint doesn't dry immediately, which is what, which is what we found when we were doing refit in the tropics. The paint was going tacky really quickly. So yeah. it's great. Really good. And it's comfortable to work in as well. You don't get sweaty and hot. So, it's all good. It looks amazing. So white. Like a, like a set of clean teeth. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Pretty good. Foundries never look so good. So there'll be a few bolts um, coming through that have got tape on them. Yeah. Nuts are over there, so I'll get you to just grab the tools and just put the nuts back on there. Okay. And then we want to we want to get this ready for painting. that we don't want to get paint on. What we didn't film is we also removed the nuts here, so we don't want to put any paint on them. It's, um, it's, it's, it's two things with that. Mm -hmm. We don't want, you don't want to get paint on your nuts. <laughs> and I think we've said it before, but it is worth repeating that you're always going to have more success with a painted surface if it's continuous under your fastenings. If it comes up to the edge of, say, a washer, that's where, um, you know, that's where the, the rot is going to kick in. That's a break in your paint, um, and you'll get, what would you call it, erosion? You'll, you'll get it peeling from there. So it's much better to have like a continuous surface of paint under the washers and fastenings. Yeah. We've got some paper towel and I'm going to wipe down these surfaces just with metho. We don't want any water or any moisture. And then metho, mate. Metho, which is denatured alcohol. So basically pure alcohol. We're going to wipe down with that. Uh, we don't want any water and then we're going to paint with primer. We can get to it. This is putting the last coat of second coat of primer on. <laughs> Bumps. Oh. Well, it's probably not safe to take no, the hood no, off yet, no, is leave it? Leave your hood on until we've exited the building. So, or the boat, I should say. Exited the boat. It's very wide, isn't it? Like. At the moment, it's a bit overwhelming, but once the wood trim comes, when, yeah. when, the, when the wood's in... Keep your hood on. No, nah, I'm just going to... Mm -hmm. 
once the wood's in, and, and these, you know, once you put that conduit on there and finish yeah. it, it'll, it'll make a big difference. And it's, it's funny, it's those little details, and you can't really see them, but they all add up to, add up to something. Everything weighs something. If you enjoyed this week's video, thanks for giving it a like. We would like to thank all our viewers whose continued funding has made it possible to bring you these episodes every week.